a mystery is a truth about God that is not knowable by human reason alone. Uh, in other words, God has to tell us about it. Uh, it must be revealed to us. Uh, this does not apply to our basic human awareness of God uh, and our universal inclination to worship Him. Uh, those functions are inborn and innate. They uh, come from the factory. They are standard issue in, in all human beings. Uh, a good example of a mystery is the Holy Trinity. Uh, we would have no way of knowing that God is triune in nature unless he enlightened us with that knowledge. Uh, perhaps even better example than that uh, is the Holy Eucharist itself, um, the real presence of Christ in body and blood uh, under the appearance of bread and wine. Uh, in other words, our limited physical senses uh, could never by themselves uh, pick up on this spiritual reality. You know, we, we need God to reveal this truth to us through uh, some means of, of valid authority, like sacred tradition or holy scripture or uh, a defined teaching or doctrine from uh, the magisterium of the Catholic Church. Credit for first using the word Catholic um, goes to St. Ignatius of Antioch, uh, an apostolic father, uh, bishop of Antioch, martyr, a writer of several well-respected ecclesiastical letters. Uh, he was a direct student of St. John the Apostle, uh, son of Zebedee, that John, John that was at the crucifixion, uh, guardian of Our Lady. Uh, he was also ordained by St. Peter, who was the first bishop of Antioch. Uh, when he left to move his final see to Rome, uh, he named several successors to his uh, Episcopal chair, which was Peter's practice. In those days, you know, most bishops didn't live long uh, for persecutions. So uh, St. Ignatius was the third bishop in line uh, for Antioch. Um, as for the actual term Catholic, uh, most catechists would quickly tell you that the term means universal, um, but I think there is a more fitting translation. The word truly means complete uh, or total or whole. Uh, what this term really reflects is that there is one true Orthodox Church, one church that has the complete um, set of sacraments instituted by Christ and possesses the, the total authority and power uh, from his holy hands and from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, uh, Jesus' point here is that people have a false notion about the nature of God that needed a slight correction. Um, pagans at the time believed that their gods uh, did not know everything. So, therefore, it was common practice to explain things to these false gods and to, in a way, plead their case, you know, uh, try to convince them that they were worthy of whatever it was they were asking for. Um, Jesus presents a much different understanding of the true God, uh, one who already knows all things and does not need or require uh, your personal color commentary. Um, and don't let sacramentals like the Rosary or the Chaplet of Divine Mercy or the 14 Stations uh, unsettle you as a non-Catholic. These devotionals are intended more for the user than for God. Um, they are tools devised to increase a person's reverence for God and for holy things. Uh, they foster a sense of piety and veneration. Uh, they are meant to focus a person's mind to the Lord and act as deep meditations um, on his life, passion, and teachings. Certain prayers and devotionals help prepare us for prayer. You know, in our daily lives of scatterbrain disorder, uh, with a never-ending schedule of events, we oftentimes are not emotionally or mentally prepared 
or ready for, for deep, meaningful communication with God. Devotionals like these are, are beneficial in soothing the monkey mind. You know, that's always uh, jumping from uh, tree branch to tree branch and uh, idea to idea. Thank you.